Hello all of you wonderful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, back again in live action for another episode of Choose Your Own Adventure, the medieval themed weekly format with an excellent name where I, the crown jewels of WhatCulture.com, deliver to thee a list chosen by the shut up. Anyway, today we have Owen Cullum to thank for their suggestion of useless video game abilities that we all wasted skill points on. So thank you, Owen. Have a biscuit from the tin, just one. Keep your bread dry and your head high, my friend. But here's the thing. If you want to submit your suggestions for this rambling rant and band, then please do so down below or in the side of the live chat where I should be right now spouting all sorts of absolute guff. And as many of you can probably tell, I wasted all of my skill points on dragging out intro videos and being bold, so it, let's take a look at some other useless abilities and skills today, shall we? Yes, we shall. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 useless video game abilities you wasted skill points on. Number 10. Vans. Fallout 4. Fallout 4's Vans perk, which stands for Vault Tech Assisted Navigational System, aims to help the player reach their next objective by drawing a green line leading them on to untold glory. And that's it. It's absolutely wank if you ask me, and looks like you're following a super mutant stinky taint trail, and in all honesty, actually feels against the spirit of the Fallout games themselves. Going off piste and getting distracted by a side mission or random encounter is exactly what makes this franchise so great. And so removing this and telling you, no, this is the only path that you shall be taking, feels against the franchise philosophy. And you know what the best thing about this is? It doesn't even bloody work half the time, meaning that you'll likely end up going off of the recommended route because Vans has broken down in the lay-by by the gas station that sells dodgy pasties and is telling you to literally phase through a f***ing wall. In short, invest in big gun skill instead. <laughs> Banter. Number 9. Swimming. Deus Ex. Perhaps the most widely mocked skill in video game history is the swimming ability in the original Deus Ex, which unless you are a speedrunner trying to circumvent levels as fast as possible, is not useful at all. Players who max out this swimming ability will be able to move like a dolphin in a game that doesn't require you to swim at all. I mean, true, water traversal can be used to open up alternate paths and avoid some enemies, but it isn't in any way mandatory. As a result, for a solid 95% of players, there's nothing to be earned by investing points into swimming, to the extent, actually, that it's become a running gag amongst fans to tell new Deus Ex players that they have to max it out. How utterly cruel is that? Delicious. Feed me. Daddy. Number 8. Gadgets While Gliding – Batman Arkham Knight So the Arkham games are full of decent skills to make the player truly feel like they're playing at the Dark Knight. I'm sorry, we just heard that a lot every time those games came out. But you know what? There is one particular branch of skills that were less boy wonder and more oh boy, what an absolute blunder. Have you ever wanted the ability to glide and gadget at the same time? No? Well, if you did, you're going to need to unlock it for each item in order to do so in Arkham Knight, and I have had teeth pulled out without anaesthetic that have been better choices than dropping points on this. I mean, unless you've got your heart set on completing the Arkham Knight AR challenges, which require you to first have unlocked this ability and then go through and try and glide and use gadgets at the same time, but it's far more trouble than it's worth. It's a good idea on paper, but offers no real tactical advantages and should only be reserved for the completionists and the sadists. Number 7. Throwback. Far Cry 5. For starters, don't you think it's a bit ridiculous that any game would actually force players to spend their precious points on an action as simple as picking up a stick of dynamite and throwing it back at their enemy? I mean, Ubi, I love you, honey cakes, but you're salt in my rim. Come on, man. But what makes this skill an especially bizarre inclusion in Far Cry 5 is how utterly infrequently the enemy will actually throw any sort of explosives or projectiles at you, at least in the game's single player offering. I mean, I can literally count on the stump where my hand would be, but it was blown off because I didn't invest in the skill how many times it was used. One. And that was across 40 hours. 
Number 6. Security – Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic Now, the security skill in the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic game might sound like an important one on name basis alone, but it ultimately doesn't amount to anything more than just opening containers and doors with a little extra grace. And I know that some of you might be there in the comments saying, it sounds useful, oh, but trust me, bash it open, destroy the door, and you'll have so many skill points to spend on combat or dialogue options that will net you so much more in the long run. And if you don't believe me, then just look at KOTOR 2, which was basically Bioware admitting that they were wrong with the delivery of this perk in the first game, as this time around, bashing containers could result in damaged contents, and as an added incentive, you actually earned XP for using the security skill. They fixed it because it was broke in the first game. Proper broke. Proper broke. Number 5. Resistance Dark Souls as the saying goes, resistance is, wait for it, futile. Now, how you distribute your skill points in Dark Souls is incredibly important, and there's no grander waste than using them to level up your resistance. And this has been confirmed by many a speedrunner and fan of the game, so don't you even try to poke my genitals with your crusty aggro swords, alright? Because above all else, increasing your resistance offers by far the worst return on investment of any attribute in the game, and it's an extremely inefficient way to enhance your defensive capabilities, seeing as endurance and vitality just make much more sense. However, of course there exists a strange cult-like group of people that insist that it has its uses, but to the majority of fans, these uses are just making an already hard game even harder. It is a no from me, my dude. Number 4. Any lockpicking ability, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim now you might be sitting there, mouth agape, food pouring out of your moor in shock about me saying that the lockpick skill is useless, but you know what? I'm right. And I mean, I can just show you. Look at the lockpicking skill tree and tell me what you see. None of these perks actually unlock anything. They only make the success rate much easier, so why bother? Lockpicks are easy to come by, and even if it takes you a dozen or so to break a master lock, it's still better than grinding for hours to make them slightly easier. Given how quickly players will get the knack of picking locks in the game, and how little you'll benefit from this perk tree overall, it is a horrendously unimaginative way to distribute your resources. So, I mean, what should you invest them in instead? I don't know, literally anything else. Number 3. Constitution Dragon Age Origins So given that the Constitution skill in Dragon Age Origins is concerned with the player's health and resilience, it seems like it would actually be a vital one to start building up, right? Well, much like when I thought that my parents would be proud of me for having an English master's degree, you are dead wrong and you need to move out. Hmm. Much like Resistance in Dark Souls, the problem is that it gives the players the worst bang for their buck out of all of the game's abilities, with players only receiving an extra 5 HP for every point they invest in Constitution. For practically every single build in the game, there are better options to invest in, such as Dexterity, and so giving your points to Constitution is the, simply the best way to get the least possible value out of them. And that's no fun at all! Number 2. Inspire – Borderlands the Pre-Sequel Now, unlike basically every other skill or perk on this list, this one is at least thoroughly tongue-in-cheek. In Borderlands the Pre-Sequel, Jack's skill tree, the hero of the story, will allow players to purchase a Tier 3 skill called Inspire. Now, by that name alone, you might assume that it gives you some sort of passive buff and, say, defense, but in actuality, it merely results in Jack periodically quipping to the player. Yep, that, that's it. That is, that's it. Literally, the skill occasionally has Jack shout out words of encouragement, telling the player that they're doing really well, or hilariously, that they must be cool because they're hanging around with him. And you just get like this little <laughs> word saying inspired crawl across the screen with stars coming up on it. And you know what? When you die and respawn, Jack will make fun of you and it will just say disillusioned appearing on the screen, accompanied by a stream of falling tears. It's actually brilliant but it does nothing to change the gameplay whatsoever, and so for all intents and purposes, is useless. At least it's entertaining enough to perhaps not feel like a total waste of time, but still, it's a total waste of time. And number one, Fortification, Mass Effect 2 and 3. 
On paper, Mass Effect's fortification power sounds pretty badass, as it claims to not only reinforce your armor, but charges your gauntlets for increased melee damage. Meat on the bone and a beefed up punch sounds pretty nice, right? Well, there are drawbacks, obviously, that's why it's on this list. I mean, unlike near identical abilities like Barrier and Geth Shield, it's a combat skill, and therefore it doesn't get the benefits or enhancements from tech or biotic upgrades as the other two do. And furthermore, in Mass Effect 3, fortification has a cooldown that is absurdly long, so long that many players swear off it entirely. Seriously, I have seen shoreline erosion happen quicker. So in short, when you've got two superior abilities to choose from, why why on earth would you ever waste resources on this one? Be smart. And there it is, my friends, another episode of Choose Your Own Adventure. I will never get tired of saying that gloriously punny name. And please drop your suggestions below for the next week's episode. And as always, I have been Jules. You can go follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Now, we spoke today at length about times that you, yes, you, Emily Anderson, wasted your skill points on abilities that didn't quite live up to expectations. And you know what? That can actually happen a lot in life. Sometimes you try hard, you build something up, but for some reason or another, it doesn't work out. But you know what? That's okay. It's okay because trying and failing just happens to everyone, and it can be sort of a personal growth experience. You can learn from your mistakes, and you shouldn't be afraid to try again in the future, even if it is very hard. Because now that you know what went wrong, or if you don't, you can always go and get help from friends, family, and professionals in the support industry. You will be able to go forward in a better way because they care about you, and I care about you, and I want you to go out there and smash it, you big ledge, because you are not alone in this. I hope that helps, and I hope that you are well and treating yourself fairly, both mentally and physically. And you know what? You're awesome. Never forget that. And I will see you next Tuesday. Oops, swore again. Bye. Bye, you little demons. Bye, you little demons. Ah!